Welcome to the Living Stone, the source of life. The workman took one look and threw it out, but God set it in the place of honour. Present yourselves as building stones for the construction of a sanctuary vibrant with life, in which you will serve as holy priests, offering Christ-approved lives up to God. We are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do God's work and to speak out for God, to tell others of the night and day difference God has made for us, from nothing to something, from rejected to beloved. And as a beloved people, let us worship God as we join in singing along with the choir of St Andrews with Castlegate, United Reformed Church in Nottingham. These recordings have been made in their individual homes and mixed together by a team of virtuosi. The words will be broadcast along with the music, but if you like to follow it in the book, the hymn is also at number 108 in Rejoice and Sing, although note this morning we omit verse 2. The love of God is broad like beech and meadow. And now let us pray. Open our eyes to see you. Open our ears to hear you. Open our lips to praise you. Open our hearts to love you. And bless us, gracious Lord. We are beloved children whom you draw near. And your promise to all your children is to be lifted up, cherished and embraced. We worship you, dear God, who honours promises, whose promise for all people who believe is the gift of life, a life with you for all eternity. Yet we bring to you, loving God, those things by which we die, 
our sin and the sin of the world, asking for forgiveness and life through the death of Jesus Christ. Forgive us for the sins that hurt us and separate us from you. Forgive us for the sins that hurt others and separate us from each other. Forgive us for the sins that hurt our planet and separate us from future generations. In this synod, in our fellowships and communities, and so out into all the world, may we look with your eyes of love and be prepared to build up the church. Eyes ready to penetrate the darkness and find the light. And in the very act of drawing others to you, come to know ourselves as beloved of you, dear God, creator, redeemer and friend. And as God's beloved and forgiven children, we share together in the words the word made flesh taught us, praying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And now Derek Graham, our Synod Training and Development Officer, will read from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked not only in the present age but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have a favourite of Paul's letters, so I asked Derek to read from Ephesians because I believe it has something to say to us as we prepare in this Synod meeting to look at Rewilding the Church, a book that is somewhat critical of the way we are. In amongst being a husband, dad, granddad, friend, elder, lay preacher, youth leader, choir member, in the little spare time I have, I am an architect specialising in church work. Actually, that sounds rather like a plug, which isn't, it isn't meant to be because Despite buildings being my work, a bit like Paul's tent making, I'm going to say something rather radical. Among other factors today, I think we should seriously consider the place of our places of worship. Certainly that they should take their proper place. Because we are the people of God. And we are the church with a capital C, and the church building with a small c is secondary, only there because the people were there first. 
these periods of lockdown wilderness, rather like a very, very long Lent, have given us, many of us, a break from the buildings where we normally worship. Yet we must be very careful not to rush back to what we used to do just because it is comfortable. And equally, we must be careful not to throw out the baby with the bathwater. I would sincerely hope that we want to get back to the church, capital C, to meet the rest of our fellowship face to face, to encourage each other to press ahead with the work of loving our God and our neighbour. We have time to think before we return to our fellowships, particularly if we follow the advice of the moderators meeting. Today and the following weeks are a golden, God-given opportunity to spend time to consider whether what we have been doing is wholly right. To say our church numbers are declining is relevant and it is also relevant to say, if we keep doing what we have been, we might continue to achieve the same result. However, to say that the church is not relevant is completely to miss the point. Just look at the influence for good that the church provides, including many of the food banks and the support and the shopping and the visiting and the giving of time and care and love particularly during this time of pandemic. We should not be tied to place, but bound to Christ and to each other in love, in the light of the reconciliation which took place on a cross nearly 2,000 years ago and was fully concluded three days later. As a response to the great gift of God's amazing love, shown to each and every one of us, the church must be the body of God's only Son. If we, as church locally and regionally, focus on Christ, if we live in Christ, if we follow in his way, if we take up our cross, then life is not going to be rosy and nice. It is going to be hard and sacrificial, but never forget that we are beloved and forgiven through and in Christ. Above all, we should not be frightened by change. Heavens, just look at all the major changes that have been forced upon us over the last 12 months, either indirectly or directly, and in so many different ways because of this dreadful pandemic. And yet, we have mostly coped. We need not be frightened by change because it is always going to be there. We should instead know the hope into which we are called. We should take time to work out what we are about so we can truly be the church which is the body of Christ. The fullness of him who fills everything in every way. We are the living stones who build the church to ensure God's kingdom breaks out wherever we are because we love and serve the world. We are chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, instruments to do God's work and to speak out for God. In this God-given opportunity, let us have the courage to unite and to reform ourselves and to confirm our hope in Christ Jesus. Amen. We sing again. Carol Micklem's confirming him, Lord of the love that in Christ has reclaimed us. At number 431 in Rejoice and Sing. And again, we will hear the choir sing as the words appear on the screen.
loving and forgiving and empowering God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we give you our thanks and offer this meeting to you with all its opportunities and all its challenges, knowing that wherever we are and whatever we are doing, you walk beside us to keep us company. You stay behind us to catch us when we fall, and you go before us to show us the way. Stir us up, as we pray not what our church can do for us, but what we can do with your mighty strength to build the kingdom with us as living stones, to discern God's true calling for us as we emerge slowly from the wilderness of lockdown into the light of life in Christ. Amen. <laughs>